it's all about Check it out Scott Ashley here with the Alabama Bass Nation. Um, tonight, or for this video, we're going to go over the uh, Lay Lake Tide Division Tournament. So, uh, first of all, welcome to the 2022-23 season. This will be our first tournament for the season. I want to start off a little bit talking about the new system and uh, apologize for the delay of getting the new system up and running where you guys could register with Alabama Bass Nation and those of you fishing the tide division, get registered for the Lay Lake tournament. And I appreciate everyone's patience. Everyone was very patient with us. So thank you for that. Um, we had just outgrown our current system and we had to do something to, um, to keep up with uh, the growth. And, um, you know, we, we don't only have a small break during the summer and we did start actually the day before the state championship meeting with IT folks and getting started on the system. And it just takes a long time to build the system. But I hope that uh, you all will find it a much better system, easier to use, and um, we're going to continue to make some tweaks to it and streamline it. For those of you um, still wondering about the juniors and the Tiger division, um, you know we're taking one step at a time with us, a brand new system. I think everything went pretty well with the Lay Lake registration. There was only a few people who had a little bit of trouble um, that we worked through pretty quickly. Um, so we, we have that one pretty well behind us now, and we're working on getting the junior registration open, uh, for the, uh, Lay Lake junior tournament coming up next week, the week after, um, the tide division at Lay Lake. Uh, we will send an announcement. Um, actually my wife is out working on it right now. Um, so, you know, that could be open anytime, hoping the worst case is maybe Monday night, but, uh, just watch for announcements. And then as soon as we get that one behind us, we'll open up the Tiger Division uh, at Gunnersville <clears throat> tournament registration. Once we get through those three, our plan is to open up all of the tournaments for registration so everybody can go in and get everything registered for the year that they want to. That's the plan. We wanted to take them one step at a time <clears throat> to make sure we had everything worked out. Um, for those coaches and those of you who are wondering, right, you know, with the new system, it should have sent you confirmations, but I know everybody is a little wary of new systems. Um, Deanna is <clears throat> working on a uh, tournament roster that she's planning to get sent out by tomorrow night to the coaches so that everyone can verify that you're in the tournament, your pairings are right, your teams are right, and all of that stuff like she normally does. So watch for that tomorrow night. Um, one big change with the new system is it's all electronic waivers, okay? That's good and bad. The good is you don't have to deal with chasing down paper forms, getting them sent in, bring them to the tournament with you and what have you. Um, but it's new, and that comes with some, some hiccups. Um, we did turn off. Uh, the system will, in the future, require your waiver to be signed before it'll let you register, but we turned that part off this time since it was brand new. So we do have some people registered for the Tide Tournament that their waivers are not signed. If an angler is registered with Alabama Bass Nation, an email will go out to that angler and to the parent, and it'll have a link in it to go sign the electronic waiver. If a boat captain is registered with Alabama Bass Nation, an email will go out to that boat captain with a link to go sign the electronic waiver. If you have not, sign those waivers please go check your email understand wasn't something you was looking for may have thought it was junk or spam uh, i believe it'll say it came from alabama bass nation but please go look at your email and see if you have that um, email with the link in it check your spam folders it, it will go to spam folders with some securities and some firewalls may block it all together if you do not have the email please email the Tide Division email and just simply put in there, did not get my email for waiver link and get tell us the angler name and um, <clears throat> whether you need just the angler email or the angler and the parent. And of course, if it's a boat captain, put boat captain. We will resend the email to you. 
um, might be a good idea for you to, well, I'll have your email that you emailed from, but if it's a different email, put an email in there. We also saw a lot of them where the email was off by one letter or one number, just typos. So if you'll do that for us, <clears throat> that would be greatly appreciated. That'll save some uh, song and dance Friday afternoon or Saturday morning when you're trying to get your boat flex, because we do have to have those waivers signed before we can let you go out. So again, just to reiterate, if you've not got an email and went to the link and signed your waiver, please look for that email. If you can't find it, let us know and we'll help you get it because we will have to have those waivers signed before you can go out in the tournament. Okay. All right. So that's kind of where we are. <clears throat> that gets us up to uh, this coming weekend for the Lay Lake tournament. Uh, that this will be our first regional tournament for the Tide Division um, out of Beeswax Creek Landing. As always, please make sure you watch this video. Um, at least one person from each boat needs to watch the video and review the slides. Um, actually, in the angler expectations and the parent expectations emails, you have to check a box that says you will watch it. Okay. I still I have some people, believe it or not, tell me they don't have Facebook. Chris will be converting this to a YouTube. And we will send the YouTube link out to the coaches at well, as well. So if you don't have Facebook, get with your coach and get the YouTube link. I know everybody has access to YouTube these days. So please make sure you review this, especially being the first one for your new teams. Um, so you understand our process and know what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> All right. With that, we'll jump into the slideshow here and go over the registration through the tournament. All right. First of all, um, for those that have been around know this, for your new ones, uh, Chris Tate, our social media, media director who's on with us, does a phenomenal job with pictures, videos, live stream of the tournament. Um, he also keeps up with live on the water action pictures and our videos. So if um, you have any um, pictures that you take out there while you're fishing, boat captains, uh, store this number that's on your screen. You can text it or email it to uh, Chris and he will get that up on Facebook, as well as if you take any other pictures around way in that you want to, to get publicized on Alabama Bass Nation Facebook, send them to the number or the email on the screen. And Chris will get that up on our Facebook for you. All right. First of all, everybody who's been with us knows this for you new teams. Check-in is an absolute must in our tournaments. Safety is the number one thing. I will not close way in and pack up and go home until I know that every person is off the water safely, okay? In order to keep up with this, our rule about check-in is if a boat does not check in, then the entire school gets disqualified. Okay, I've not had to do that, but I have had to run some down. I will get on stage and call out your names and look for you because I have to know you're off the water safe. Okay, so if you guys don't remember anything else from this meeting, this slideshow, fishing with us, always remember that you must check in. We always have two check-in people on the dock. You must check in. We have to know you're off the water safely. All right. Uh, we've already talked about one member from every boat watching this video. Official practice. We get a lot of questions from new anglers about official practice. Official practice starts on Monday morning, the week before the tournament. Official practice means that only you can only be in the boat with another competitor, another person who is a competitor in the tournament. Okay. Obviously, that's going to be your partner and your boat captain, but in some cases, you know, you could swap boats with another teammate or something as long as they're a competitor in the tournament. You cannot be on the water with someone who is not competing in the tournament come Monday morning the week before the tournament. Official practice ends and off limits to the water. A lot of people confuse official practice with off limits. The lakes are not off limits until the registration, which is picking up your registration card and your boat flag, starts on Friday afternoon before the tournament. For this tournament, that is 4 p.m. on Friday, September the 30th. All competitors must be off the water by 4 p.m., okay? So just so you understand, 
beginning Monday morning, which in this case is tomorrow morning, you cannot be on the water with anyone who is not a competitor in the tournament. You can be on the water, you can practice, as long as everybody in the boat with you is a competitor in this tournament. And you can practice all week up until 4 p.m. on Friday. Okay. <clears throat> For registration, that will be at Beeswax Creek Landing at the boat ramp. We will have the Bass Nation trailer there. And we will be there between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Friday, September the 30th for everyone to come by and pick up their registration cards and their boat flags. We do encourage you to, you know, send one person or the coach to pick up all of them if you can. If, if you can't, that's fine too, if you want to come get your own. But uh, it helps us if one person comes and picks up the whole school. If for some reason you're not able to make it there on Friday between 4 and 5 p.m., please call or text me and let me know so that I can pull yours and have those ready to pick up on Saturday morning. On Saturday morning, you can pick them up at the bass trailer between 5.15 and 5.45 a.m., okay? But if, if you're not gonna, and that's fine, we don't have a problem doing that, but if you would, please let me know so that I can pull yours and have them ready and we're not waiting on you on Friday afternoon. <clears throat> For those of you that are new, you'll get a registration card that has a lot of our rules and procedures on it, what we can squeeze on there. It'll have your flight number, your boat number, and your check-in time. When you come pick those up, please look at your registration card and make sure the boat number on your registration card matches the boat flag number that we give you. We do make mistakes. Sometimes a six looks like a nine when John turns it upside down. So please check that. <clears throat> Standard rule for all tournaments, and ours as well as the maximum horsepower for all outboards is 250 horsepower. That includes during official practice. Get a lot of questions on this. This is a team sport. Each boat must include a boat captain and two high school anglers. We understand that things happen. An angler gets sick, has a conflict, what have you, right? But if there's only going to be one angler, then the boat must have an observer and an observer must complete a waiver as well. The observer waivers are done manually right now, so you'll have to see us or go to the website and pull up and print a paper one and sign it. But each boat must have three people before it goes out. The launch site is Beeswax Creek Landing, and you can use alternate ramps. There's not a whole lot of alternate ramps, so there is Paradise pulling up there, but I know some people stay at houses that have boat, private boat ramps, that's fine you can launch at an alternate ramp. Blast off, pay attention to this and there's a map that shows this. <clears throat> We're gonna blast off from the dock that's on out Pe Beeswax Creek down at the park, okay? I guarantee you there'll be a bunch of boats hanging around the boat ramp at daylight Saturday morning wondering what's going on because they didn't pay attention to this. We're not blasting off from the boat dock right there at the boat ramp. Once you launch, you're gonna idle, start idling out um, Beeswax Creek and there's a dock you'll see on the map here where they have a little park further out in the ramp. We do that because it's kind of crowded back there at the boat ramp. That way we can space people out and get you blasted off quicker. All right, for blast off, your boat flag must be secured to your boat and, vi and visible sight to staff and other competitors. Okay, so for you, you, the new ones coming, you'll get a boat flag and two zippy ties, and you are to attach that boat flag to your boat somewhere where it can be seen by us as you idle past us at blast off, and competitors will be able to see it during the day. And that boat flag must stay up all day long. Okay, so if you're going to tie it on to your pedestal seat on the back or your pedestal seat and then you're going to take your pedestal seat down that will not work it has to stay up all day long <clears throat> life jackets must be worn anytime the combustion engine is running boat captains this especially includes you i have more trouble with boat captains than i do anglers so boat captains life jackets on zip snap buckled however it works boat captains okay i've been there i've done that i know that driving the boat is the highlight of your day, but please be safe. 
Your job is to keep these anglers safe and to set the example for them and teach them the right way to do things. Um, on the topic of safety coming out of Beeswax Creek, there is an S curve that's very tight. So there will be no passing until you get out of Beeswax Creek. Where we're blasting off from is right there at the beginning of the S curves. You'll be okay for 30 seconds to get through the S curves behind the slow guy in front of you. Okay, so wait till you get through the S curves and hit the river if you're gonna pass. All right, <clears throat> first flight check-in time is 2 p.m. We will be doing flights in 10 minute increments. We usually do somewhere between 10 to 12 boats per flight. So it's not consistent. So make sure you look at the check-in time on your registration card. There's a map for this, but no wait will be the boat, rock, boat ramp and dock area, as well as the off limits will be that same area. There's a map here in a minute that you'll see. Size limit for Lay Lake is 12 inches on largemouth and spotted bass. Okay, and anglers, we still see a fair amount of short fish come in. Okay, and I have actually taken a tape, two or three tape measures actually, and checked our golden rule to make sure it's accurate. Okay, so ours is accurate. I think what people are doing is they're not closing the fish's mouth. To bump a fish, the mouth must be closed. Okay, so if you catch a fish that's questionable and you're gonna check it on your ruler in your boat, close this mouth, lay him down flat and check it. That's the way we're gonna measure it. We will even fan the tail and make every attempt that we can to make it measure but I still get some that come in a half an inch short. So make sure you're closing that mouth on the fish. All right, it is a five fish limit per boat. And what that means is when the sixth fish enters the boat, everybody has to stop fishing. When you stop fishing and then you look at your fish and you're gonna obviously throw back the smallest fish. Okay, that's what it means when you call down to five. Once you throw back the smallest fish and you only have five fish in the boat again, then everybody can resume fishing, okay? Check-in will be at the tee dock at Beeswax Boat Ramp, okay? Where you launch at, at the boat ramp. And we'll have two people on the dock again. Check-in is an absolute must. You, you check in before you go to weigh in, okay? Check-in is when your time stops for the tournament, okay? So let me give you an example. If you come in five minutes early, but you don't check in with the check-in person, you bypass them, and you go tie up to the other end of the dock, and you go get a bag, you go back and get your fish, then you go up to the tanks, then you wait in line in the tanks, and then you finally get to the stage, and it's, 10 minutes after your check-in time. You just clocked out of the tournament 10 minutes late, and that is a 10 pound penalty, okay? Does everybody understand that? Your clock stops when you check in with the check-in person. So you must check in with them before you go to weigh-in. That's the first thing you do when you come back into the boat ramp area is find the check-in person. There'll be a flag that says boat check. There'll be two people standing there beside it. One of them will have a clipboard. They'll be hollering at everybody. Idle by their close. Make sure they see you. Give them a high sign. Get some acknowledgement from them that they have you checked off. Okay. You must check in even if you have no fish. Okay. Remember, if you don't check in, it's a, it disqualifies your entire school. So you might think, well, I don't have any fish. So... There's no penalty they can give me. I'm not weighing in anything anyway. Well, you're going to hurt your teammates, okay? If you have no fish, you can leave your boat flag with that check-in person and then go load your boat and be on your way, okay? But very, very tough on this because I have to know everybody's off the water safely. So please make sure you check in with our check-in person. The only exception is if you cannot make it back into the boat ramp because you break down or if something happens early in the day before we get out there and you have to leave early, somebody gets sick or what have you, okay? In either case, you must call myself, Jeffrey, or Daryl and let us know what's going on, okay? 
we'll help you any way we can for one and two we have to know that you're off the water safely for example if you're broke down and you call us right and but you say you've got somebody coming to get you we're gonna say that's fine thank you for letting us know please text me or call me once you're off the water safely because i make a note of it and i go through those notes before i close the term okay so again, please, please make sure that you check in. If you can't make it back to the boat ramp, please call myself, Jeffrey or Daryl, and let us know you're off the water safely. For this tournament, it is a water weigh-in only. Um, you're gonna tie up to the dock and bring your fish to the scales. Do not trailer before weighing in, okay? It's a pretty fair sized tea dock there at Beeswax Boat Ramp, but it's not humongous. So once you weigh in, please, go back and move your boat off the dock and load your boat on your trailer and make room for the next flight coming in. We only, for those new ones, we only use our official Bass Nation weigh-in bags, okay? So don't put your fish in your bag. Come when you, after you check in, tie up to the dock, come up and get one of our bags, okay? And then go back and put your fish in. Anglers, this is a big one, and I know it sounds trivial, but it, it costs us a lot of time. If you want to weigh a big fish, when you hand your bag of fish to the weighmaster, who will be John, the normal guy, tell him, I want to weigh big fish, okay? That way we know, don't wait until after I interview you and then say, I want to weigh big fish because those fish have already went down to a tank. Deanna's already queued the next person. We got to change everything, bring the fish back. So please tell the weighmaster when you hand him your fish that you want to weigh big fish if you want to weigh big fish. All right. <clears throat> weigh in, you'll see on the map here in a minute, the trailer will be at Beeswax Boat Ramp. Let's see approximately where it'll be. Um, parents, as always, we'll have the fish available. We'll put, put them in a tank right there beside the stage and you'll be able to take pictures behind the trailer with your anglers with the fish if you'd like to. Um, <clears throat> remind app. This is a new remind app for this year. So everyone pay attention to this, um, sign up for it. It's got the directions here. Um, you're gonna text to 81010 and in the body of your text, type at A-B-N-H-S Tide, okay? I got another slide to tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But next you've got all of our numbers, mine, Jeffrey, and Daryl's. It'll also be on your registration card. So make sure you have that number handy in case uh, you have any issues or can't make it in the way in. All right, on the Remind app, I did a whole slide on it so everyone can see it well and um, get signed up for it. There is a limit on the Remind app. I guess it's around 150. Daryl gave me this. Um, after it gets 150, he's gonna open up a division B on the Remind app. So I think what he's gonna do is put, um, I think that one will be ABNHS Tide B. I'm assuming, uh, but we'll get some messages out on that uh, when we get to that point. All right, blast off procedure. I'm gonna go through this since only this time because I know we'll have some new schools and some new anglers, okay? For blast off, you're gonna launch at beeswax, boat ramp or an alternate ramp, as I said. You'll proceed to the staging area in beeswax creek safe, slowly and safely, and there's a map in a minute that'll show you where you need to be. You'll stage by flight and boat number according to the map, okay? And that's the, one of the reasons for the boat flag. You'll be able to look around and see what boat numbers are around you. You should be around boat numbers that are close in your number, right? If you're boat number 170, you shouldn't be in around the, the, the 20s, okay? Um, once you get all light staged and we start to blast off, <clears throat> you stay back from the dock. If, Boat captains, if you'll line up as things start moving and come toward the dock in line, it'll go much, much quicker, okay? If a boat number in front of you is missing, right? Hesitate, give them a minute, right? As the line starts forming and we got 
one, two, three, four, five, and your boat's seven, and you wait just a minute and you don't see six anywhere around you or not headed that way, go ahead and keep coming, okay? Boat six will wake up in a minute, right? And as fast as I blast, blast them off, he's probably only going to lose about 10, sec 10 or 30 seconds anyway, okay? So don't sit around out there and, and hold the line up waiting on a boat, right? Hesitate, give them a chance. If you look over and see boat six coming, wait a minute, let him get in. But if you don't see him, come on. Uh, let's see. You're going to idle all the way by the dock, parallel to the dock, close enough for us to see you, okay? And anglers, do not stick your arm out if the boat captain's hitting, going to hit the dock, okay? That fiberglass can be repaired cheaper and um, a lot less painful than uh, your arm can. And boat captains, if you'll get parallel to the dock as you're coming up, it'll go much smoother. Boats don't make 90 degree turns. As you idle by the dock, we're going to check, do what we call boat check, and we're going to look for all of these things. Again, the boat flag attached to the boat invisible site, running lights up and on. Yes, even if it is daylight, it's an insurance thing. Live wells open and running, life jackets on and fastened. Again, the keyword fastened, buckled, snap, zip, however it works. Boat captains, kill switch attached to you, okay? Do not pull the kill switch. As you're idling by the dock, just kind of show it to us. If it's on your wrist, pick your wrist up. If it's tied to your life jacket, kind of pick your life jacket up and show our person checking it, but do not pull it. If any of these boat check items are missing or lacking, we're going to pull you over until you get it fixed. The, the last staff member on the dock will tell you when you're clear to go. You must continue to idle all the way past the dock. And for this one, you're going to want to idle out past the dock. And boat captains, it's a little shallow at all the docks at Lay Lake. So I would kind of have that motor bumped up a little bit as you come by the dock, not trimmed all the way down, ready to take off, because you're going to want to idle out away from that dock a little bit before you try to get on plane. Boat captain do's and don'ts. For high school, it's pretty simple. Boat captain, you're there to drive the boat to keep them safe and teach them how to be safe and, and how to conduct themselves. You can verbally teach and instruct, which is all those things I just said, and you can help them cull and manage fish only because of fish care. That is it. You cannot run the trolling motor. You cannot net fish. And for whatever you do, please do not pick up a rod and reel because if you do, I promise you I will get a call and I will have to come talk to you, okay? All right. Once you check in, again, this is the end of the day. When you come in, the first thing you're going to do again is check in with our check-in person. Once you do that, then you'll tie up to the dock. You can send one angler up to get a weigh-in bag, and you'll see on the map here in a minute where that will be. It'll be in plain sight. That angler will get one of our bags. When you get that bag, make sure that it, it should be a black solid bag and inside there should be a mesh bag. Make sure you have that mesh bag before you go back to the boat. You go back to the boat, you're gonna put your fish in that net bag. You're gonna fill the solid bag up with water and you're gonna put that net bag with the fish inside the solid bag of water. Then you're gonna cut your boat flag off cut the zippy ties and you're going to bring your boat flag along with your fish up to the tanks. If you do not have your boat flag, when you get to the tanks, you're going to have to go back and get it. You cannot weigh in without that boat flag. Uh, let's see. Once you get to the tanks, you're going to take that net bag out and there'll be somebody there to direct you. You'll take that net bag out and you'll place it in our tanks with your fish, keeping it closed. So you don't want to have to catch those fish again as happened. And then you'll just proceed through the tanks as directed until you get to the bump man. The bump man will take your flag, check your fish, and then you'll be put in a Q tank and wait for the MC to call you on stage. Okay, when the MC calls you on stage, you'll go up with your fish, hand them to the weighmaster. Again, if you want to weigh big fish, tell the weighmaster at that time, I want to weigh a big fish. We'll weigh your fish, call your weight, I'll talk to you a little bit, give you an opportunity to thank your boat captain, parents, sponsors, whatever you would like to do. And then you'll go off the stage and your fish will be right there where you go off the stage. Um, and parents can come up, 
and take pictures behind the trailer with you there with your fish if you would like. All right, some logistics. We're getting there. This is the boat ramp at Beeswax Creek. It's kind of the traffic flow. Everybody's been there should know you're going to come in, go all the way to the far end of the parking lot. There's arrows and directions there. Circle around the parking lot and launch your boat. There's a parking lot on both sides of the road. Only big thing is, if you can see my mouse, here where this stop sign is, we're gonna, we will have a person there stopping you when you come in because at some point on Saturday morning, we'll get lined up pretty good and this will be lined up all the way around to the boat ramp, all the way back to the stop sign. As you can imagine, if we don't stop traffic there and leave a gap for people to go across to the other parking lot, then you all get hung up in what I affectionately refer to as the circle of death and nobody goes anywhere, okay? So please pay attention to this person here where I have the stop sign. Stop there. He has your best interest in mind. He's keeping the flow going and keeping everybody launching, okay? This is a little bit, this is an old slide of the parking, but you do have the main parking lot and then the secondary main parking lot across the road. That will hold the bulk of our, our 214 that's registered right now. You can park on both sides of the road, headed back out toward the highway. Uh, we'll probably end up putting some there, okay? Do not park out on the highway though, if we get past that. I know that um, they I've seen vehicles towed parked out on the highway. Do not park out on the highway. If the parking lots are full and the road out to the highway is full, then go all the way to the back of the park where you see the P5 and P6. There's some extra overflow parking. I don't think we'll have to use that, but uh, it is available. Just do not park out on the highway. All right, here's where we're going to blast off. This is the boat ramp over here on the left-hand side of the screen. There is a dock, fair piece out the creek here. I'll have a light out there and have the speakers. You'll hear me. You'll be able to see the light. After you launch, get everybody in the boat that you need. Start making your way to the staging areas where we are, right? If you're back in the boat 200s, you can stay back there at the boat ramp, okay? Uh, there's be plenty of room for everybody to spread out and make um, the blast off go smoothly. Boat captains, as I said, it's a tad shallow here at this dock, and you can see even in Google Earth here, this point comes out a little bit. So my advice is to idle past that dock and idle out just a little piece before you shower down on and take off. Don't want to mess your prop up. Okay, and then once just out past what's on the screen is where those S-curves start. Remember, there's no passing out there. Off limits and no wake is the boat ramp area that there should be unless they've gotten moved. No wake buoys out here. So basically inside those no wake buoys is off limits as well, <clears throat> okay? Remember, and, and the check-in person will be here on this T-Dot. You see on the slide there, remember to check in. You must check in before you go to weigh in. You must check in even if you have no fish. If you have no fish, you can leave your uh, boat flag with the check-in person and then load your boat and be on your way. If for some reason you can't make it in, you must call Jeffrey, myself, or Daryl and let us know and let us know when you're off the water safely. It is a water weigh-in only. Um, here's a little bit of a diagram of how things will work. You'll come in and tie up to this dock. The bags will be here. Let's leave the dock over here to the left um, as open as we can for uh, people getting ready to load their boats. You'll pick up your bag, and then after you get your fish, this is approximately where the... Um, Bass Nation trailer will be. You'll come up from the boat ramp side onto the stage and then off and take pictures. And then also new for this year, this will be the debut of our new, uh, brand new fish care trailer that we have um, had built for Alabama Bass Nation as we continue to improve and uh, take care of the conservation of the fish. Uh, Daryl went to Arkansas this week and picked it up. We have a brand new fish care trailer with oxygen in it and everything. So we'll take even better care of the fish. So anglers, you'll take pictures and your fish to the fish, the, the person, staff member working the fish care trailer. And then you will be done until you come back and get your awards. 
Um, just a reminder here, once you um, weigh your fish and take your pictures, please go back and uh, get your boat off the dock and load your boat and make space for the next flight. All right, let's see what else I got here. Only other, let's see, remember a dead fish penalty? Remember, it's, I just said we bought a fish care trailer to take care of the fish. We can only do, take care of them from the condition they're in when they get to us. So anglers please, and boat captains, please take care of those fish during the day before you bring them to us. Our dead fish penalties are stiff. It's an escalating penalty. It's 0.25 for the first dead fish, 0.75 for the second, 1.25 for the third, and so on and so forth. The scales will open at approximately 